food became my lover, you know. It was just easy to eat, you know. God has us here for a purpose, but we can't really fulfill our purpose significantly if we don't feel good, if we don't take good care of ourselves. I'm Nicole Johnson. All our lives we've been told that in order to be healthy, we need nutritious food, regular exercise, and adequate rest. All true. But how many of us can say that we get those things in our lives all the time? Unfortunately, our modern stress-filled lifestyles can cause us to put our health and our bodies last on the priority list. But we believe as Christians that God has created us with a mind and a soul and a body for a reason. Doesn't it follow that we should take care of the one body God has given to us? Most people know obesity is linked to diabetes and heart disease, as well as some cancers. Obviously, people of faith are not immune to this problem. There are a lot of Americans overweight, and I think people are overweight for different reasons. Dana Dimitri is a registered nurse turned lifestyle coach who helps people achieve their very best physically and spiritually. Some are simply overweight because they don't move enough. If you look back to the turn of the century, the average American woman probably burned about 23, 2400 calories a day. Today she burns about 1700. That's purely an activity issue. If you think about your body like a car, it's really your only vehicle for life. It's the only one you're going to have. You can trade in your car, but you can't trade in your body. So in reality, we really need to treat it in a way that we can have the highest energy, the best health and fitness, so we really can have high quality life. God has us here for a purpose, but we can't really fulfill our purpose significantly if we don't feel good, if we don't take good care of ourselves. Some Christians feel so comfortable in their spiritual life that they just don't think about how they're neglecting or abusing their physical life. But knowing where we stand spiritually in Christ doesn't mean we can avoid the consequences of an unhealthy lifestyle. Well, there are a lot of health associated risks with being overweight. Certainly most of us know about uh, cardiac complications, diabetes, there are many even arthritis and different kinds of joint problems because we're carrying too much weight. People want to change overnight and I understand it because I did too. But in reality, God is more concerned about our character. If we're doing things for the wrong reason, if we are trying to change our bodies just for ourselves or just to please our husbands or society, it's very empty. Dana is very critical of the multi-billion dollar diet industry. Her own approach to food uses gradual measurable techniques to reduce food consumption and increase calorie burning physical activity. My challenge with the diet industry is just that there's so much hype. I think we all have struggled, I've struggled, I come out of the background at 16 I was bulimic and remained bulimic for about 16 years, struggled with compulsive overeating. So I speak not as a professional who's just always had a handle on this area of my life, but as a, a woman who really knows what it feels like uh, to be out of control and to look for answers. And so with the diet industry what we find is there's so many quick fixes. Uh, you hear products called things like exercise in a bottle and fat in and fat out and fat absorb this and that and the reality is there is not a pill out there that can solve our problem. If you really want to look what counts, it's calories in versus calories out. And I do not propose that people can't become chronic obsessive calorie counters, but we do need to get aware of what we're doing and the more we burn, the more calories we burn and the less we eat, the more inclined we are to lose some body fat. But there is no magic way to do that. It's literally slow little changes over time. A real good example that I think helps people is that I, if I could simply get a woman to maybe move an extra 200 calories a day, for an average woman that's maybe walking two miles, and eat 200 calories less a day, that might be cut one cookie out of your diet. That's a difference of 400 calories a day. In a year, that's about 40 pounds. That's a lifestyle change. That's a very simple thing that a person can do and they think, well, I'd like to lose that 10 pounds in two weeks. Not gonna happen. But if you do the little things consistently, it adds up and it's in a big way over time. Carol Young struggled for years in a bad marriage and had a terrible self-image. While she found temporary comfort in food, the corresponding weight gain made her even more miserable. I started eating. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, when you have, you're in a, a relationship that um, isn't going well, okay? So you look for other things to kind of offset it. And that's what I did. I went to food. All my life I had heard from different people, oh, you're so pretty, you're so beautiful, you know? But inside there was something missing, okay? And because there was something missing, I ate a lot. 
you know, and when my husband and I were starting to have marital problems, um, it just caused me to eat more, you know, and I felt like I was a figurine, you know, like I was beautiful to put on the, on the showcase and show and dust off, but you really didn't have any function. You didn't have um, practicality, you know, so I wanted more. You have to change your thinking. Before you can, can change your body, you have to change your thinking. And that's what I started doing. I started evaluating myself the way God sees me. God didn't see me as a figurine. He saw me totally different, you know. He gave me purpose. He gave me uh, strength and wisdom. And when you renew your mind, your body just cha changes, your, your, your thought changes. You know, I'm no longer concerned about how much I weigh but yet I know I'm losing weight, <laughs> you know, because I'm more conscious now of what I eat. I'm more conscious of exercise. I do a lot of walking. Um, quick diets don't work because you do them for, you know, you do it 100% for two weeks and your thinking hasn't changed. So therefore you go right back to that bag of potato chips or that bowl of ice cream because you've got to change your thinking. And so I encourage the women and the viewers out there who are really hurting not to give up. God does want to help them have victory, but, but I think we have to get to the point where we, we know it's not us alone. It's with His grace and His power that we can do it. There is so much hype today created by the diet industry that it can be hard to know what eating right means. So here to help us shatter some of the diet myths and give us healthy eating principles is registered dietitian and corporate nutritionist for Henry's Marketplace in San Diego, Patty Milligan. Welcome, Patty. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining us on Midpoint. Great. I'm glad to be here. What are some of those diet myths? I mean, it is easy to be confused today. It on... really is. It really is. And I think it runs the gamut. Everything from, oh, high protein. If yeah. you're eating carbs, then you're not going to lose weight or, in right. fact, gain weight. Then on the other side of it, it's be vegetarian, yeah. eat extremely low totally fat. carbs, right. Exactly. And then there's probably even three or four where take these brand of supplements mm -hmm. and you too will lose weight mm -hmm. and you won't have to really worry about what you eat. Yeah. And then even, let's go back to the cabbage soup diet. That's <laughs> taking another <laughs> rerun. So it's the idea where you eat one particular food, right. a grapefruit diet, cabbage soup, cabbage soup, whatever it is, to kind of help with that. And I think oftentimes we, we get confused between what is healthy and what is like designed to lose weight. And people don't necessarily exactly. want healthy, they just want a quick fix for weight loss. Exactly. And you know, in all defense for people out there, it is tough because once the marketing arm gets in there, yeah. it gets really, they know how to play the emotions and yeah. then pretty soon you're starting to look at all these dieting things and you're going, I guess I shouldn't listen to my body. I yeah. should eat this one particular way. There's a part of everybody that thinks there's got to be some exactly. way to get this under control. <laughs> kind of just, the light switch. Well, yeah. okay, then there really is maybe not a magic pill if, if they go, oh, I don't believe in magic pills, yeah. but there's got to be a trigger that I can eat one thing and make all the difference. Yeah, and I, I heard somebody say one time that most of the diets presume that the food is the problem. Exactly. And therefore, rather than our eating habits or the way that, you know, what we choose to do, you um, are so right. And yeah. I think that really goes back to how we were designed. We really are an integrative body. We have yeah. a spirit, a soul, a mind, and a body. And when you look at many of the dieting books that really just address kind of an abstract food kind of concept, yes. if it doesn't involve the connection between the mind and body, yeah. you're really not going to get a lasting change. Or really, the way I like to look at dieting isn't dieting, yeah. but let's feed the body mm -hmm. the way that it was designed to be fed mm -hmm. so that it gives you the best performance. Okay, well, let's dive in. Tell us how to get okay. a better grip on how we eat and what we eat so that we can really get that high-octane okay. fuel going. Sounds good. I think the first is, it may be boring, but you really need to assess, are you in the right mind frame to lose weight? Mm. Or like you say, let's switch from even that. You may not like what you've done with adding pounds or sluggishness or whatever, but mm -hmm. let's focus on feeding the body so that it runs at a high performance. So yeah. if you get that mindset switch, your decisions about food are a little bit more long-term than from meal to meal, because yeah. it really isn't a willpower type thing. Yeah. We're too, uh, our body has so many naturally designed principles to keep that high energy in us 
that we want to make sure we address those with the foods that we eat. Yeah, because we do know willpower. I mean, my willpower lasts, you know, 20 minutes on a right. good day. Right. And then uh, we're back to the same other things. Exactly. So. And even though I know this is said many times, we are really designed to eat throughout the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sounds like I such a that. basic principle. Yeah. <laughs> but w when you look at how our blood sugar and how our pancreas and yeah. all the organs and the hormones are related, we really do need to have bursts of energy provided throughout the body. And that's really what food is, packages of energy, if you look at it that way. Yeah. And so by doing that, they've actually shown by eating good in the morning sets the stage for the rest of the day. Wow. And I think it's interesting when people start to diet and they go, I'm not going to eat breakfast. Right. You know, because I'm not hungry. I'm not going to eat. Well, again, we're kind of smart inside, if you will. Yeah. Because what happens is your body keeps track and says to you, well, I noticed you kind of were minus on the calories. I'll make up for it with that ice cream sundae the night before. Really is your breakfast the next day. Yeah. So yeah. even though you feel like, oh, I can be good all day long, you're going to get those extra calories in at some point. Yeah. Well, and is it true, Patty, that your body takes its cues from the food that you eat? Meaning if you don't eat food, then your body says, oh, we don't have that energy to give you. You know, it, so right. it, it slows down your metabolism to compensate for the fact that you don't have any food in you your stomach. You are so right. And again, think of the wisdom and how we were designed. We are made yeah. to survive. And yeah. you, you have X amount. We have to breathe every day. We have to have a heart pump every day, make new cells. And at you, at, you're right. If there's only so much fuel, your body says, well, I better, whoa. The message is slow yeah. down that metabolism yeah. so we can stretch those calories for these functions. And what happens is... Yeah. That baggage stays on. Wow. And I'm not a big calorie counting type person yeah. because you I can think get the, lost in that. I yeah. think so. And it really is an inaccurate science. I mean, even though we know what a bagel, everyone says, oh, a bagel may be 240 calories. Well, you know what? There's a big fudge factor in that. Yeah. <laughs> because of the different people that make the bagels and exactly. all that kind of stuff, too. So you don't want to get caught in numbers. You mm. want to really be listening to your body when you start eating. Wow. And when we do start eating, what do we need to be eating? That's a good question. Yeah. We did say start the day with breakfast. Yes. We also know that the most important thing for metabolism is actually water, surprisingly. Wow. I know. It's so interesting that, again, it sounds so boring, but great amount of studies that say by just increasing your water, when wow. you're beginning to cut calories, you actually keep that meta metabolism the same because yeah. you're helping to flesh out the waste products. Yeah. It helps your energy because you have good blood flow to your brain and down to your toes. Yeah. So the amount of water, surprisingly, is about a half a cup to a cup every hour that you're awake. Wow. It's truly the guidelines you need for metabolism. Wow. Good. What else? Okay, well, we're, okay. we're So we talked about now. water, and then the two areas that when you look around the world at the different kinds of diets, if you will, mm. that people eat, we tend in America to have kind of cut back on a couple. One mm -hmm. is whole grains. Mm. And again, I feel like everyone hears that, mm -hmm. but maybe I can put a little bit of a different spin on it. When I mean whole grains, it's like different kinds of rice, brown rice, wild rice. It's also mm -hmm. whole wheat. Mm -hmm. It's using some type of fiber like flax, which interestingly enough is one of the first foods in the Bible mentioned. Yes. Quinoa. Mm, and then also mm -hmm. like a vegetable type pasta that has a little bit more nutrition to it. As opposed to just refined. white flour. Yeah. Exactly. And what mm -hmm. they're showing now are that these foods are actually steadying the blood sugar because that's a big thing when you're trying to lose weight too. Right. Not to ride the roller coaster exactly of your insulin. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. And so by steadying blood sugar, you burn fat better, mm -hmm. but you also need some particular minerals to help your muscles handle really that extra if you're beginning a workout or whatever and it turns yeah. out that packaged in these whole foods are those wonderful wow. minerals too that kind of provide that balance but the second area which may fool a lot of people is they're showing that having proper healthy fats in the diet actually causes you to lose weight <gasps> no I know. fats <laughs> putting fat back in the diet oh, we no, can't do that four letter word but it turns out the healthy uh, fats are the fats in yeah. walnuts mm. Pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds? Yes, pecans. People, and you almonds. throw out pumpkin seeds. You carve I the pumpkin know. and you throw that away and I you know. can eat those? Yes. They're now yeah. again showing that what happens is when you have taken in a lot of the uh, processed fats, let's say, just over a lifetime, yeah. your little cells fill up with those and you don't get good um, communication between your cells. And what happens is, one, is you don't have as many good hormones traveling between your cells. So even mind-body connection, 
great study on hyperactivity in kids in this wow. that they improve by changing the fats because of that communication. But dieting, <laughs> so you want to eat the right fat and then say talk amongst yourselves. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Get that communication going. Well, yeah, bring together a bunch of your friends, have the good fat, good communication. There you go. Good. But it turns out that with these kinds of oils and fats, mm. is they really help the whole body run better. And wow. one of the afterthoughts is mm -hmm. your body will give up the icky fats. In the form in the favor of, of yeah, in f in the favor of good healthy fats that stay around in your cells. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's kind of fun. That's Sunflower fun. seeds also. We really yes. should throw those in. Okay. Those They're can good, be included good fats. as good fats as well. Yeah. And now, that's true because a woman picks up a little thing of sunflower seeds and she thinks 15 <gasps> grams of fat. You know, I can eat. You know four Twinkies for that, exactly but it isn't right. the same, is it? It's not, because yeah. one is you, again, get that wrapped up with all the vitamins and minerals that help your body do metabolism, and a protein level that's mm. quite high in, nut, in nuts as well. That's and the great. last one is, if you're thinking dieting or that you want to lose weight, concentrate on what to include in your diet versus what mm. to take away. Mm. And one of the things that I like to talk about is kind of the rainbow of foods. Mm -hmm. uh, if you eat the colors of the rainbow every day, you're less likely to have room for some of those goodies and your desire will go down because you'll get natural sweets in the fruits and vegetables. So wow. if you do it that way, then you're really talking about eating something red, orange, yellow, and green. Wow. And uh, you know, really, if you think about it, think about it like yesterday, what you did, we often leave out big gaps of those foods. Oh, it's true, you know? it's true. So it can be kind of a fun way to shop because it's like instead of dieting, a, you know, oh, I better stay away from that, I better stay, you're like, I better load up with red foods and yeah. orange foods. It's yeah. again kind of a mind switch in your mind. Yes, and again, orange is not Cheetos. It's yeah. like orange peppers, <laughs> okay, carrots. Okay, <laughs> I'm thinking orange. I know exactly. <laughs> no, you're right. We want to make sure that yeah, uh, it's you know, naturally orange. Exactly right. right. Okay. And okay. they also say you know you shop in a grocery store. The perimeter dash in and out of the aisles. Yeah. Because if you think of the perimeter of a grocery store, you're more likely to have your home filled with foods that are a little bit better for you and you're less likely to get a lot of the junk kinds oh, of foods. That's great, that's yes. great. Well, thank you very much, Patty. Some faith traditions over the centuries have taught that one should despise the body in order to better focus on the spiritual aspects of life. But today it's clear that a strong, healthy body complements the abundant Christian life. When we glorify God in our bodies, when we honor Him with the vitality and enthusiasm we feel, Others can see him working through us. I just think, I'm beautiful. <laughs> you know, but the beauty is not an outward beauty. It's an inner beauty. There's a really neat quote that I've heard Oswald Chambers, actually he wrote, but it's one of my favorites. It says that we cannot do what God, only God can do, and that he will not do what we can do.